Hello, my name is Dominica Lee Crugnelli, and I'm going to walk through uh, some questions regarding application analysis with you. So third party applications, they're really the, the root of what we're after when we're analyzing these mobile devices. In order to acquire these devices, um, you usually re uh, require a commercial tool or some kind of backup utility. Now, depending on what is used, you may get more or less data in your acquisition. So first off, it's really important to determine how the device was acquired uh, because that will determine what you're able to see in your analysis. It's also important to understand what is included in the backup. And I say this because as uh, these application versions are evolving, it is becoming more common to see that developers are choosing not to include data in the backup. How will this affect our investigation? Well, we may be left with limited or no third-party application user-related data. But let's say we're lucky enough to get a little bit of that data. Um, are there any kind of conclusions that we can draw based on what we do have access to? And is there another way to possibly get additional items of interest out of these applications? Well, I'll start with iOS devices. Um, the very top here, I'm going to mention, mention the original path that we, you would want to look in to determine whether or not there's any third-party user-related data associated with an application. So that original path at private var mobile containers data or private var mobile containers shared app group, those are going to be the original path to the data we are looking for. Most of your tools, commercial and free, will want to normalize these paths in such a way that makes more sense to you. Um, instead of giving you the GUID or the unique ID associated with the application, they'll actually tell you what app directory you are looking in. So those normalized paths that you see in most of your tools, the private var mobile applications directory, you may see the third-party app of interest you're looking for, well, you may also see the group directory for the third application or third party application that you're interested in. Um, I would check both of those places to determine whether or not there's a database associated with your app of interest. Next, we'll take a look at Android devices. Similar to iOS, you may find information in multiple locations. On the Android devices, however, um, it is pretty standard as far as where you're going to see this data. If you are accessing the internal NAND flash, that data is likely stored uh, under the user data partition, the data directory, and then the third party application of interest. In this particular screenshot, uh, we were fortunate enough to have a physical acquisition of this device. And that is why you're seeing the entire user data partition here. And most often, the bulk of what you care about will be located in the internal flash memory of the device. Now, another area that you're also want to, going to want to examine when you're looking at Android devices is the media directory. The media directory is a location that you should always be able to access on your device. You can get to this same location simply by plugging your Android into your um, desktop or laptop machine, um, and it should give you access to the media directory inherently. Um, what I'd like to mention here is this particular um, screenshot is from the application Telegram. Um, Telegram stored information of interest in the internal NAND flash, as well as the media directory in a folder related to the application. So if we didn't get that, that, that area of interest on the internal NAND flash, we could definitely get the data that was in the media directory. 
The third place I would look if I was on an Android device would be the emulated or a possible real external SD card. Um, this is another place that third-party apps likes to off-put their data. So if you're dealing with, um, and this is very consistent on long chat applications, if you're sending large files back and forth like pictures, videos, documents, audio files, they'll want to offload that data someplace else. So it's not usually stored along with the rest of the data in the internal flash memory. In this case, we're looking at the emulated SD, which truly is an area of the flash memory, but it still likes to segment it and segregate it from that data and let you know that if you should have a real removable SD card, um, that data would have been found there. Um, so you can see this particular directory um, out there on the emulated or possible real SD card, there was a cache directory. And most of the times, especially related to this application Telegram, the data of interest um, or the pictures that you think you're after, um, for whatever reason, they would allow you to see that caches directory. Um, on the iOS device, you had access to it, and you also had access to it on your Android device. So now the conundrum. What happens if you don't have full file system access? And what I mean by full file system access, on that Android device that I showed you, I was rooted. I could get that entire internal data directory from the NAND flash. On my iOS device, I was jailbroken. I could get to that database that existed in that group directory, or excuse me, it could have been the third party directory too, um, but I was allowed to get to that data. If I'm not, and I only see those images that populated that cache directory, what kind of conclusions can I draw? Well, um, it may be important to determine whether or not um, certain actions will put pictures in that folder. And what I mean by that, what happens when I send a picture through Telegram to another user? What happens if they send a picture to me? What happens if I go out and I look for a friend that I wanna make contact with? Um, will I see evidence of this in that cache directory, whether or not we've ever established friendship? So these are the things that you're going to have to determine. And it's going to be difficult to do if you don't have a rooted or jailbroken device. So what I suggest is populating a test data or populating test data. Um, and I would do that on a phone that you can jailbreak or root. Uh, once you're able to see what's really going on behind the scenes, you can make some pretty good assumptions about the data that you can access on your actual um, investigating device device that you're um, taking a look at. So what I mean by that, um, the database that we were not allowed to see in the Android device was that cache4.db file. On the iOS device, it would be a tg.db uh, file. Um, but basically, that is the database that contained all the information about um, who you're friends with, who you've chatted with, um, how many messages you sent back and forth, and what kind of data you were sending along with those messages. So what I did is I used that database that I could access on my test phone to make some assumptions about how data got populated in that cache directory. So you can see down here in red, um, on the bottom database table, under date um, of 12-20-2018 at 12-28-02 a.m., uh, a picture was sent but right after the message of here's my tree. Now, if I go up and take a look at the cache directory, I can see that within one minute of when the actual message was sent, based on the information I can obtain from the database, that picture hit the cache directory. So now we can say with pretty good assumption that the data there is related to messages that were sent and received um, and 
it can also be associated with different avatars um, of individuals that are using Telegram, whether or not you've ever made contact with those individuals. One thing I'd like to, to mention specific to this application is that it didn't matter whether or not a message that was sent to you was viewed. It still hit that cache folder um, and the date was based on the date that the item was sent. So um, you could see there in the bottom database under read state, the very top message was never read, uh, but it still has a timestamp of 12, 33, and 45 seconds AM. And that picture also exists in the cache directory. So this is the type of granularity that you may have to get into with your testing. So what do you do next? Um, I've said the word test about 10 times. You cannot draw these conclusions without having a test device. I recommend having one for iOS and Android. And when you purchase those devices, make sure that you can root your Android and jailbreak your iOS device. Following that, I would create test data about any third-party application of interest that matters to me. Um, sometimes you will have to recreate the same scenario that you're seeing on uh, the device that you're trying to investigate. This is the only way that you're going to be able to make sense of that data. Um, you can't get too hard set also on things that I'm showing you today because tomorrow when I install the new application update for Telegram, it may look completely different. So always test if it means, uh, if it really matters to you. Um, don't use someone else's test material. Every single time I look at an application, I do the testing myself. So if this is something um, that got you yearning for more iOS or Android forensics or how to analyze third-party applications of interest, we have several upcoming courses in the new year. Uh, there'll be a class in Amsterdam in January, three classes in February. Uh, the first offering in New Orleans, if you can't make it live, you could join us via simulcast, which is the same as sitting in the classroom live. You'll be able to ask questions of your instructor and receive instant feedback. Um, we also have three offerings in April, Orlando, London, and Boston. So we hope that you're able to make it to one of these courses with us. Thank you.